Okay, welcome everyone to this continuation of week eight topology. Um, so the missing part that I wasn't able to uh, do anymore in the well last lecture on Friday. So last video I've seen. So I just jump in at exactly the same slide here. Uh, the Euler characteristic of those basic surfaces. Uh, let me do one calculation for you, such that we are all on the same page. So here in this picture, for example, what I need to do is I see one face. So I just write one. I see one, three edges, so I might write minus three. And well, let's see. So if this is X, this is the end of A. So this is also here. And this is Y, so the start of A this is also here. So I write two minus three plus one. And if I don't miscalculate here, then it should be zero. So that's what we do all the time. Um, you might wonder why I'm not marking uh, the vertices of the uh, polygons to begin with, because I would like to tell you the minimal amount of information and the, the vertices, which well, kind of the identification of the vertices is already in the information I'm showing you. So that's kind of left to us. We still need to do that all the time. And for example, for this surface here, so if you do that, for example, X at the end of A, at the end of A, at the end of H, H is free, so we don't go anywhere. Um, so we jump from here to here, and then it's at the end of uh, here, at the end of E, at the end of F, which is the start of E, um, and C is a free edge, so X just ends up being here and here. So you can see Y, do the same for Y, Y is here, do the same for W, W is here. And there's one more, do the same for V, V is here. So we have X, Y, uh, W, V, these are four vertices, X, Y, W, V, four vertices. Um, if you count the number of um, uh, edges, you will count eight. And there's clearly one face in the middle so four minus eight plus that looks like minus three. And I think I miscalculated. So this is essentially uh, minus three, right? So four vertices, eight edges. So up to H, H is the eighth letter in the alphabet. And the one face is always easy to identify. Okay, um, so let's kind of check the main or prove the main result and then we are done. The main result is that the Euler characteristic is a good invariant, a good number that you can attach to a surface in the sense that it doesn't depend on the polygonal decomposition of that surface. And the only thing I would, well, the only thing we need is remember that for graphs, we actually showed that subdivision uh, doesn't change um, the Euler characteristic and we just do the same. And subdivision is the following operation for surfaces. We subdivide an edge as we have done it before, or we subdivide a face, um, which is just drawing another edge between it. So subdividing an edge is the same as for graphs. And then we have this extra operation, drawing uh, an extra edge. And then we have two faces. So the one face will be two faces. There's an extra edge. And we call that a subdivision of the surface S. Um, yeah, and that's what it is. And yeah. We claim, so the subdivision is denoted by S uh, dot, if you remember, and it turns out that the subdivision, that's not hard to see, just look at the two steps here, that the subdivision keeps the surface the same. So subdividing gives you many more polygonal decompositions of a surface. And well, the proposition, or maybe I would actually like to call that a theorem, but anyway, it's a proposition now on the slide is, that Euler characteristic um, is invariant under subdivision exactly as it was for, uh, well, the um, graphs. And it's very simple. It's exactly the same argument, essentially. So here we have uh, one edge and two vertices. Then we have so one edge and two vertices. Then we have three vertices and two edges. So the overall Euler characteristic, which is V, minus E plus F doesn't change because you have ab absolutely done nothing. It's this operation of um, adding one of them, a pair of a vertex and an edge. Maybe I should make this a little bit clearer, like in the graph picture. 
So it's really just the vertex at the edge and they don't contribute anything to the other characteristic. And the argument for the subdivision of a face is exactly the same. So you subdivide your face. So F goes up to F plus one, right? So you just make uh, one face into two, but the number of edges also goes up because you just added one edge. So it's also invariant under the Euler characteristic. So uh, subdivision doesn't change the Euler characteristic exactly as it was for graphs. Um, so both operations preserve chi, our good old friend, the Euler characteristic. And the point is um, that you can now use subdivision quite nicely. So for example, uh, any subdivision keeps the number of boundary circles. And it's again, just look at the two operations and they clearly don't change the number of boundary circles at all. I remember that I explained the bound number of boundary circles is given by this operation of counting three edges and kind of um, looking at the vertices and see whether they form a common edge or not. And this operation simply doesn't change that. So uh, any subdivision keeps that property. And the theorem is um, that there is actually always a common subdivision of two polygonal decompositions. Um, it's a common subdivision of P1 and P2. So you can kind of make subdivisions as fine as you want, if you want. And the idea to prove that is again, one of these amazing ideas, which is really simple if you just see the picture. So we basically merge two subdivisions. Um, so here's the subdivision of a surface and here's the subdivision of a surface. So the surface is the bluish, whatever it is, star type area, the whole thing. And we have vertices and edges and faces. And here's a different one with vertices, edges, and faces just arranged differently. And we kind of want to merge them together. How can we do that? Well, here you go. You just, this is the first one. This is the second one. So what can we do? We just put them on top of one another. There you go. Uh, you might complain, wait, 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 wait. That's not a subdivision. Um, it isn't, but it's easy to make into a subdivision by just adding the extra vertices if necessary. So let's go back. So there's not a subdivision here. You, for example, have this crossing edge, but you can just put a vertex at that spot and you get a common subdivision of both. It's a very simple proof. So really, I just do it again. Just take the first one, take the second one, put them on top of each other, and you might need to add extra vertices, but that's it. Really simple, simple idea, and turns out to be very, very useful. So you always get this common subdivision of two given subdivisions. And you might wonder, how on earth could that be useful? Um, and the corollary is that um, if you have two surfaces, S homeomorphic to T, that's what we want, and they have uh, some polygonal decompositions, then what we know is the Euler characteristic stays the same and they have the same number of boundary cycles. That follows from um, the previous statement. And this is pretty good because now what we can do is we want to know whether this holds uh, question mark. So what we do is we check chi of s and get whatever number minus seven or something. We check chi of t and get whatever minus six. These numbers are not the same. So by uh, doing the converse of this corollary, this implies that the surfaces are not the same. So that's why we call it the Euler characteristic, an invariant of the surface. It's a number that you just compute. And if the number spits out something different from uh, to a given test surface, you know that your surface is not the test surface. And you can <clears throat> play the same game with the number of boundary cycles. Okay, uh, let's prove this corollary using the previous results. Now, keep in mind that the corollary really wants to say that the Euler characteristic is an invariant of surfaces, a numerical num invariant, the number that you attach to a surface, and it can tell surfaces apart. Um, and well, we assume this, so there are those continuous maps. Well, that's just by assumption. And if we have a polygonal decomposition, then we can just push it over um, to a polygonal decomposition of T. 
and vice versa, if you have one of t, you can just kind of pull it back to s. But we already know that polygonal decompositions are um, invariant under Euler characteristic. So essentially, we are done. So the Euler characteristic um, are the same by just merging them. Right, so all our characteristics of S is the all our characteristic of P. You push it over, is the all our characteristic of Q, is the all our characteristic of T. And similarly, um, you can do the same trick with boundary circuits. So, what we used is that the all our, so the main meat here is that the all our characteristic is an invariant of poly polygonal decomposition. So, so, um, so you can easily compute it from the polygonal decomposition. That's what I wanted to say. And this uh, polygonal decomposition really uh, much, uh, acts nicely with um, homeomorphisms F and G. Okay, um, that's pretty good. So this is really the question we would like to answer. So can we somehow detect surfaces, right? I would like to do this with polygonal decomposition. And in principle, that's easy. We just need to find the maps in practice. That's just not happening. It's just really, really hard to decide of very often. And in particular, it's hard to decide that S is not isomorphic to T using this approach because, well, you need to, to show that something doesn't exist is really hard. So if, well, there is, for example, I showed you that the circle is isomorphic to um, the square. Uh, sorry, not isomorphic, homeomorphic to the square. And that wasn't so hard. Just wrote down the maps. But to show that such a map not exists is really, really hard. Because in principle, we could just be, or I am just very stupid. Um, and I just don't see the very crazy homeomorphism from S to T. So we need some tools to study that question. And uh, that's these are exactly the invariants. So why are they useful? Because they, they help us to answer this question, namely um, the harder question, whether no, no map exists. So what you do is, um, because you have the only if, you can reverse that statement in the sense that if chi of S is not equal to chi of T, then it follows that S is not equal uh, not homeomorphic to T, which is just reversing the statement that we just showed, namely that it is an invariant, right? So we know this way, and the bottom implies the top, and actually is the same as the top. So um, that's the whole point of invariance. It helps us to show that things are not the same. It doesn't help us to show that things are the same. So, um, so if you get if you might get the same Euler characteristic, then we can't tell. They could be the same or they could not be the same. But if you get a different Euler characteristic, they're always different. So let's have go back and have a look at some of our friends here from before. Um, so the list I had before, let me go back. OK, so 2, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0. So we know that the sphere is not the projective plane. It's neither of those, but we can't say anything about those guys for now, right? We can't really distinguish them um, as it is because we just don't don't know from the older characteristic. We could, well, because I also showed you that, you say at least that this one is not this one because they have different number of boundary cycles. Uh, so, but we still have no idea how to distinguish the torus from the Klein bottle or the annulus from the Berbius strip. But kind of all our characteristic only that does already does a really great job here to say, for example, that the Klein bottle is not, so they're not homeomorphic. It's not um, the projective plane, which is an absolutely non-trivial statement because those both surfaces are actually pretty complicated, but the Euler characteristic tells them apart for us. Right? That's the whole point about um, the existence of invariance. And in some sense, a lot of topology is about invariance because you will always want to check that something is the same, but that's very hard in practice. And we use invariance for that. And I showed you one that is really powerful, which is um, the other characteristic. I also showed you the number of boundary cycles. So we have those two invariants for now to tell surfaces apart. Thank you very much.